there once again and if you don't know already I'm Scott Florence and as you can see at long last I am back. Now just now what I'm going to be talking about is some of the latest science news, more specifically various articles of news from the quantum computing world. With those things being quantum computing with recycled particles, macroscopic quantum teleportation, record entanglement with one laser beam, the entanglement of a photon and electron within a quantum dot, and the creation of so-called lava dots, which are quantum dots made from what could essentially be considered as lava. So the quantum computing with recycled particles, this was done in the University of Bristol's Centre for Quantum Photonics. And within the quantum computer, they were able to recycle a particle. And in this case, the particle that is being referred to is in fact a photon. And during a calculation being made by this quantum computer, a photon was recycled, meaning that the calculation was able to go further than it otherwise would have been able to. And this had meant that they were able to factorise 21 when the previous highest that had been managed was 15. Dr. Anthony Lang was the project leader and he said that quantum computers promised to harness the counterintuitive laws of quantum mechanics to perform calculations that are forever out of reach of conventional classical computers. Realising such a device is one of the greatest technological challenges of the century. Now the reason that they had been using the quantum computer to factorise numbers whose factors are prime was because classical computers struggle to factorise large prime numbers. However, quantum computers are much more effective at factorising them as they can use Shor's algorithm. Now in a quantum computer, recycling one particle is the equivalent of recycling one bit within a conventional computer. However, since in quantum computers, instead of bits they have qubits, it means that the number of qubits that are required are reduced by a factor of three. Now since we are still talking about individual bits in quantum computers, we are still quite a way off from having quantum computers at the same sort of level as we have conventional computers. However, this does get us closer because, for instance, Shor's algorithm requires a relatively large amount of resources, and this makes it much more viable. Now, on to macroscopic quantum teleportation. Now, I have talked about quantum teleportation and explained what it involves in a previous video, which you can link to here or in the description down below. But macroscopic quantum teleportation is teleporting things that are on a much larger scale than just the quantum scale. Now, the reason that I'm including news about quantum teleportation in this video is because quantum teleportation would be useful to be within a quantum computer because it would allow the transmission of quantum states without the transmission of a particle. Now, it is fairly important that this has been done with macroscopic particles because previously quantum teleportation has only really been achieved with single ions, photons, or between matter and a single photon. Now what was achieved here was the entanglement of macroscopic groups of atoms of a size of about one millimeter in radius, and the entanglement of these led to the teleportation of the states. I'm going to have to apologize for my pronunciations of names throughout this video, but this was led by Zhuanwei Pan at the Hefei National Lab for Physical Sciences at the Nanoscale. Now perhaps you're thinking that this one millimeter radius quantum teleportation is not that impressive compared to all the other stuff that's been done. But this atomic ensemble was of 100 million rubidium atoms. Basically, the way that they did this was they entangled photons with each of the different groups of atoms and then entangled the two photons that had been entangled with each of the groups of atoms. Now, due to background excitations, this was only achieved about 88% of the time, but it does show a lot of promise. And if a large-scale quantum network were to be managed to be created with this, some improvements do still have to be made, because currently the spin wave states of these groups of atoms which are the quantum states that had been teleported, only last about 129 nanoseconds. And for a network to be achieved, this needs to be increased to about 100 milliseconds, as that is what's required for the teleportation of multiple ensembles. Now for a record entanglement with one laser beam. Now within quantum computers there would need to be hundreds of thousands of entangled states. And under normal circumstances one entangled state needs its own photons to carry the data. As entanglement is useful for transmitting data within the quantum computers. Now in the Department of Quantum Sciences at the ANU College of Physical and Mathematical Sciences, led by Seiji Armstrong, eight entangled quantum modes were able to be transmitted 
by a single laser beam. Now back in 2011, the best that had been achieved was four entangled states in one laser beam. So the more entangled quantum states that we are able to have within one beam of light would mean that quantum computers become even more feasible. Now moving quickly on to entangling a single electron spin to a single photon within a quantum dot. Quantum dots are nanoparticles made from a semiconductor and they can be made from things such as indium arsenide. Now what was done here was a entanglement between light and matter. Now this has been done previously, but it was not done on such a small scale. Previously this has been achieved in systems of trapped ions and atoms, or in diamonds. But being able to do it in a quantum dot means that it's able to be done within a much smaller scale. But being able to do this inside a nanoparticle means that it's being done in a much more compact space. This was led by Christian de Grave at Harvard and also researchers at Harriet Watt, Wasberg and Stanford. The aim for this was to manage to transfer information between quantum dots to be able to store and transmit data when needed. But the issue is quantum information cannot really be perfectly copied or cloned. So how would you be able to go through a series of quantum dots effectively? Now the way that they managed to do it was using a method called entanglement swapping. Now the way entanglement swapping is done is both quantum dots emit a photon and these photons are made to interfere with one another and as they are interfering they are observed and through that simple process the dots of A and B are both entangled and a whole chain of these could be feasibly done in order to reliably transmit the information. Now what their method was was they had a quantum dot which they fired a laser at and that laser excited an electron within the quantum dot. That electron then relaxes and releases a photon which is entangled with the electron with the electron spin depending on the light's polarization and wavelength. For instance, if the photon was measured to be blue and with vertical polarization, then it would have spin up, but if it had red and horizontal polarization, it would have spin down. But finally, what's been called quantum dots made from lava. Now, the reason I've brought up so much to do with quantum dots is because they are of interest because they could potentially be used for screens as when they are excited and then relax, they emit what we have as visible photons. But perhaps more importantly in this video, they are used within quantum computers, as the energy levels and other characteristics of single electrons within the quantum dot are controllable depending on various aspects of the quantum dot. And also they allow properties such as spin to be precisely measured. They also have uses in various aspects of biology and chemistry, but that's not what we're going to go into here, nor are we going to go into these solar cells. But a cheaper way of manufacturing the quantum dots was accidentally discovered in Rice University. And this was done accidentally because what they were actually looking for was a cheaper way of making quantum tetrapods, or nanojacks as they are also referred as, because these can be used to harvest light for a new type of solar panel. Now they were looking for ways that they could make this process of creation cheaper and cleaner, and in doing that they just removed the phosphorus to see what would happen because phosphorus is rather expensive itself. And what they ended up with was hollow spheres of selenium. Now the way that they made this was with powdered selenium, cadmium nitrate and citronium bromide, just a little of the citronium bromide though, and then that was put in an oil solvent which was then heated and stirred. Now as the temperature rises, the selenium melts and coats the cadmium nitrate, which then goes off and dissipates out of the selenium, which is just left as a hollow sphere. This leaves the spheres at around 15 to 20 nanometers, whereas normally quantum dots tend to be between 2 and 10 nanometers. And the hole within these dots is around 4 to 5 nanometers. So they're not exactly the most ideal quantum dots, however, they can be compressed, which means that many can be fitted close together. Well, that's all for now, and thanks for watching. I'm going to be aiming to get back into this again because, well, I plan to upload a lot more, but apparently whenever I say I need plans and upload me saying them, it just does not happen. So I'm not going to go into any more detail about what I'm going to be aiming to do. Thank you very much to all of you who have stuck around and to all of you who have joined whilst I've been off at university and not got around to uploading any new videos. But please do tell me what sort of videos you'd like to see. Thanks again and I will see you next time. Qubits that are required is, are reduced by and during a calculation made by this quantum compu <clears throat> computer, it's not hard to say the word computer. So the quantum, so the com quantum computer, quantum. Comp
quantum quantum computers. But what was Hefei? Hefei. Hefe? But this was led by Zhuang Weipan. No, Zhuang Weipan. But this was led by Zhuang Weipan. No, did I say laboratory? Laboratory. Laboratory. Atomic ensemble. Ensemble. Hundred. Yeah. Now quantum dots are nanicles. Nanicles. A much la larger scale. No. In a much more compact space. And a whole chain of these powdered selenium, cadmium bromide, no, nitrate, cadmium bromide, nitrate, dissipate, yes.